What is good, y'all? It's the G Game Man back in Bandit with yet another Reds rebuild video. And last time out, we were starting to right the ship a little bit. If y'all remember, getting on a four game winning streak here, trying to come back. We are fourth in the division, as you can see there, four games back in the division. And we got some ground to go ahead and cover. Now, we're going to go ahead and start today off with a little bit of simulation here, going up against in the series against Pittsburgh. They're just slightly ahead of us. And we're getting a lot of runs here, or a lot of hits and a lot of runs here. But the pitching staff is just, just did not hold up today. Hernandez, horrendous start, four and two thirds, giving him seven earned runs uh, in his start today. He's been kind of all over the place, really. Uh, you know, he has a good start, then he'll have a bad start. We don't give him enough offensive runs, then we give him a lot, and he kind of you know, spoils it. So we'll look to see if we maybe correct that as the episode goes on. Getting into our first gameplay action here today against Pittsburgh, game number two. Lucas Sims on the mound, trying to shut the door on this one, man. Trying to go ahead and bounce back from the loss. We don't want to take too many L's in a row. So 6-5 lead here, getting him to swing and miss through the 4 C. He 0-1, chopping a slider, going foul territory 0-2 to O'Neal. Upstairs, he gets him swinging and missing. And that is two quick outs from our sure-handed start, uh, starting closing pitcher. Last year, he was really shut down when he came into the night for games when we actually finally put him in safe situations. This year, I need the same situations. I need to trust that I can go to this man in the bullpen and he's going to shut the door when we actually get those chance to get victory, man. Here today, he did just that. We went 6-5 to five against Pittsburgh to even the series back up and go into a game three with a chance to go ahead and win the series. Now, as you can see with the start there, I mean, giving up five run runs, not really a good situation to go ahead and pick up a start. But Seth Lugo actually comes in, the relief pitcher that we picked up in free agency. To go ahead and get the win there, we were able to put together just enough offense for us to be able to come back here. Aguilar, two home runs out of that three spot here today. Joey Gallo also hitting his third home run of the season. And rookie Granger, two more doubles. He's up to six already on the young season. That is a great start. Nick Lodato, four on runs and five innings of work. So that back end of the starting rotation has to get some looks here as we look to try to improve on the season. Now, Jose Barrero. One of our backup shortstops, or I should say backup infielders, because, you know, he can play all over the infield. We'll come in with one out, runners at first and second, and a chance for us to walk off this ball game. We are down 3-2, to two, and it'd be great to close out a series victory. He lays down a bunt. This was going foul territory, and it will get down to the 1-2 count here. He laces this one out into right field. It'll get down. That's a base hit that'll load everything up with one out, and with one swing of the bat, we can easily walk out of here with a victory. Next up, we got Doug Granger, the rookie. A chance to go ahead and walk this one off for us. I mean, I wouldn't want anybody else up the way he's been playing to start the season. Now, today he's 0 for 3. 1 2, he swings and misses through the upstairs four seamer. Probably should have been a little bit more patient. Now we got Donovan Solano. First pitch he sees is grounded over to second base. He'll glove it, throw over to first. That'll be the final out, man. So we walk out of here with a series loss. 3 to 2 here to Pittsburgh. Just. Couldn't get enough offense, which is crazy if you compared to what we did in the first two games, putting up crazy amounts of runs. And then one day we actually have the pitching to kind of back up the run support. We were just not able to get it done. Castillo uh, doing a great job in his starting uh, starting role. India getting his second home run of the season. We definitely want to see that power coming from him to kind of lead off the lineup. But five innings, three earned runs. That at least helped the ERA get a little bit lower. And we go into game number four here where we lose one nothing, only five hits on the offensive end. So once again, no offense to show up, a great pitching performance. We just seem to struggle to put it together. You know, one day we have a good pitching performance, no hitting. Next day we have hitting and a terrible pitching performance. Tyler Mahaley has been doing a great job this season, though, putting together good pitching performances. And then we bounce that back up, though, with a victory here. Against Milwaukee, 5-1, covering across a 12-hit spread here. Solano, three-hit day for him. Mustakis and Aquino both hitting home runs to kind of put us in a good position to hopefully look to go on a winning streak here. Serino, six innings, only one earned run. So his ERA is extremely low. And between him and Mahaley, they've been the only two bright spots of our starting rotation, to be honest with you. Everybody else has been kind of struggling and not really doing what they need to to put us in a good position to win. That's why we're under 500 to start the season early. And that is strike number three. 
a chance to walk it off in the bottom of the ninth, but we'll have to go to extras. And they got Art Warren on the mound here. That's a liner over the first baseman head. Granger will go ahead and try to cut it off. He does not take a good angle. Takes it off the wall, and this will be an RBI double to start off the top of the 10th and give Milwaukee a 3-2 lead. Can Art Warren battle his way out of this 2-2 count? Four seamer gets him swinging. Christian Yellich is up next, one out. And this is not who you want to see. He's already two for four here today, and he could make this lead a whole lot bigger. Swinging misses the curveball. I don't know if you saw there, he was batting 0 .53, 0 .053 with a runner's in scoring position. So maybe he was the man we wanted up. So now two outs, a chance to go ahead in the inning, and he just couldn't glove the foul set ball, but we will get him to swing and miss there. 3 of 3 down as far as outs go, as far as strikeouts. And Jose Barrio will come up, no outs. Runner at second base, and we are down 3-2, but it's still a chance to tie and possibly win this ball game. Facing off against Josh Linden ball with a 1-1 one, one count there. That's a perfect swing on the four-seamer right down the middle of the plate. Going out to left center field. Home run. Walk off home run for the big red machine, and they are able to walk it off here in the bottom of the tent. Gave up a double in the top half to give up the lead, and lo and behold, that man, Jose Barrero, our bench player, comes in and does what so many Reds players have done already in the series, and it's another walk-off, two-run, home run. Left the fastball too much over the plate. He's just able to line shot this one right over the left center field gap, right over that big, giant, red, whatever you want to call it, wall, fence, but he takes it right out over there for a nice souvenir for the fans to go ahead and take home for the victory. And we stun Milwaukee. Kind of looking at the box score to see what else everybody else did in this game. I mean, six hits, not too bad. And then a great strong pitch performance for Hernandez. So like I told you, has his ups, has his downs. Six innings, two earned, four strikeouts, only four hits given up too as well. So that was a great performance by him and then Lugo and Warren coming in and shutting everything down. Now we got the bottom of the ninth, similar situation. Joey Gallo up with no outs and a chance to go in and walk this thing off against Alex Bettinger. The closer pitcher or set up man for Milwaukee has been a very good one and kept our hitters off balance. You see the slider gets Joey Gallo waving. Next up, we got Mike Moustakis. He's one for two in the day, one, two count. Swings and misses at the change up low. He was not ready for the off speed. Next up, Jonathan India hitting low in the lineup today. Maybe doing some weird lineups when uh, I'm not, you know, in there every game and playing, but he swings and misses as well on the check swing. Bettinger gets us into extra innings. So now we have a runner at second base, no outs, and we have Lucas Sims, who is in the ball game, trying to just shut the door as the slider gets Dever swinging at his feet. Hunter's up next, and he flies this one out deep into left field. Joey Gallo will settle underneath it. Not really much room there for him to try to move up 46 feet. Wouldn't be enough. So now we've got two outs. Or a second. Cincinnati having a chance to at least take this one back into the bottom of 10 for another walk-off. 2-2. Two -two swings and misses at the four-seamer. And we will have our chance to go ahead and walk this ball game off yet again. Nick Senzel up to bat. And he tries to bunt on the old. Oh, tries to bunt on the old one pitch as well. So first two pitches, he tries to bunt. They're way out of the zone. And then he swings at the slider. That is not a good at bad at all. You swung at every pitch out of the zone. Now Matthew Nelson up the middle, and he will throw over the first base. That'll be the second out, but he's coming home. Jonathan India is out by a mile. Probably try to catch them slipping, see if they weren't paying attention. They definitely were. And now we'll have to take this thing to the top of the eleven. No outs. Lucas Sims is still in there pitching and dealing. Slider gets him swinging. He's 32 pitches in, so it might be time to take him out soon. But as for right now, we can squeeze one more inning out of him and not have to go deep into the blue thing because you never know how long the game can last. We'll take it. 37 pitches in, one, two count, and he takes this one deep out right in front of Senzel. He won't get there in time. He'll have to come up throwing, though. The throw will go to the plate. Runners going to second base. Not in time. Everybody is safe. There's an RBI double with two outs for Jonathan Davis, and Milwaukee takes a two to one lead. Now the two to one count, Pedro. Takes this one out right to Gallo. He will settle underneath it. And this ball game will come down to Cincinnati's offense. Let's see if they can come back in this bottom of the 11. Jose Barrero up first. Runner at second base as always. 2-2 two -two count. They're swinging. You're missing through that pitch. He takes this one. Lines it out to right field. It's going back deep. And he will be able to move up on the sacrifice fly. So now we got runner third. 
One out. And this is a big chance that Cincinnati can use. Granger, the rookie, swings and misses through the circle change. And once again, in the clutch, he just doesn't have it. You can't expect much out of a rookie, man. He doesn't know the big pressure moments. It's Donovan Solano, though. Takes the base hit out in the right field. The run will come around and score with two outs. They have tied the ball game back up, and the winning run is at first base. Donovan Solano has really turned the season around from the start. A couple three-hit, a couple multi-hit games. Now that clutch hit to kind of keep this game extended. 2-2 Two -two count to Jesus. Now runs full. Can he get something to hit? This is a... Forcing right over the middle of the plate. It will get down. Going to the corner. Now they tried to give me the pinch run. I didn't listen. I thought 35 speed might be enough. Maybe if we get a little bit more speed at first base, this ball game is over. Could be a bad GM move on my part. We'll have to see. Joey Gallo swings and misses through the slider. And we're taking this into the top of the 12th inning. Now, a little bit of game glitch here. There goes a base hit into the outfield. Since that will have to come in. Throwing the throw, it looks like it's going to be offline a little bit. It will be cut off by Aguilar. And just that quick three pitches and a run comes in. It's back to 3 2. This is Luis Caesar. A bunt going right back to him. Throwing back to second base. Gets the lead runner back to first. Not in time. So at least a smart play there, trying to get the lead runner out. And now they keep the double play possibility still in there. That'll be off his foot. India will come in, gloves it, throws over to first for the safe, secure out. Not wanting to risk it and getting two people on with one. So I appreciate it. Next up, we have a 2-2 two -two count to Hunter Renfro. Swings and misses at the slider off the plate. And we'll go back to the bottom of the 12th. Similar position that we've seen a couple times now. Mike Mustak is running second base, and we need to bring him around. He swings at the high heat. The four-seamers up in the zone. You can tell he's clearly frustrated. Next up, Jonathan India with a 3-0 count. Can he walk on four pitches and really make this game interesting? As that is called strike number one. Jonathan Indy is confused. He's looking around. He was starting to walk over to first base. He was sure he walked. This time, there's a little check back at the end. Like, are you sure that's a ball this time, right? You got one out. This is Nick Senzel popping this one up shallow into right field. Not enough to move up on. So we will come down to the last battle. First and second, Cesar Hernandez. Swings and misses through the force him in the dirt. He will have to get it in glove over to first. And the throw is online. If that was an error, I don't know, but... It wasn't, so we have a loss on our hands, man. 32 here, eight hits given up on both sides. Mustak is his fifth home run of the season. Nick Lodato, great start. Only one earned run uh, to start off the ball game. We just couldn't get no offense going. And by the time we did, we had already given up those extra inning runs to come around. Thankfully, they're not earned, so ERAs ain't hurting. But next up, we got a series against the New York Mets, who are blazing the exact opposite of us this season, 14-5. and five. And we lose game number one here, nine to seven, putting up tremendous offense. But Castillo, four, four earned runs. Gutierrez, two of them as well, coming off in the long reliever role. So clearly some things that we've got to fix in the pitching rotation department. <laughs> and I don't know exactly how we're going to be able to go, go about doing that. But here, right after going through that, I want to get in a little player lock game with Tyler Mahaley. He's been having a great season so far, only a 1.8 ERA. He's pitched very well in all of his starts, not even had a hiccup yet. So I didn't want to get a game in with him. He deserves it. He deserves a little player spotlight here as we try to get a full game in. Now, he was very good this game. Control was really nice. Didn't really give up too many extra curriculums. You know, we got seven strong innings out of him today. And I was really proud of what he was able to put up. You see, he's locating the four-seamer well here. 0-2 count to Sterling Marte. Gets him to foul up this slider right out the center field for out number one. up with Luis. He gets him to uh, the far seamer back out to right field, and he will go ahead and take that one too as well. So just that quickly, two quick flyouts. J.D. Davis lines this one as it's a base hit out into left field. So, so far, everything has at least reached the outfield level. No infield play here to start the first inning. 1-0 count to Pete Alonzo. Gets him to swing through that four seam heat. Next up, coming right back with a four seamer, getting the lucky call. You can see a little smirk on his face. Two two swings and misses through the slider on the outside part of the plate, and we are getting through the first inning cleanly. Now the only thing we have to watch for is will he get some offense to kind of go with a good pitching performance here? Chops out the curveball. One two count to Francisco Lindor. Gets a little liner over the first base. He will glove it and run it over himself. And for a second, it started off thinking, you know, very pitch to contact like, you know, he was getting the swing and miss, but also getting a lot of weak contact. Other than the base hit, of course, that, you know, slid by, swings and misses through the curveball in on the hands there from Dominic. 0-2 count. 
swings and misses at the four-seamer. That heat is just a little too much to strike out number two on the day. Jeff grounds this one right over to shortstop. He'll glove it, throw, go over. Nice stretch and outreach there. Six, seven up, six down, no runs. Chris Taylor's coming up next, bottom of the third. And he will take this one a long ways, going way back into the gap. It'll hit off the wall. They'll bring it in quickly with 82 speed. Could have probably been a triple if it played any kind of differently. But they'll have a lead off double to start the third here. Now it's a little chop bat going over to the second base. Throw goes over. Jonathan India, way to get the out there. One out. We need a strikeout though, so that way we don't get a run coming across. Sterling Marte now 0 2 count after taking that one. Takes the four seamer way out of here. Home run going out to deep left field, man. Starlin Marte makes him pay for the four seamer up. You had him put away in the, in the count, in the at bat. Just let him get back into it. And that one just barely hit off the foul pole to be a home run. Now we got to see how he bounces back. You just gave him up two run runs because of the home run. And then you bounce back with a two outs or uh, two pitch single. So now we got one out. J.D. Davis is back up. He got a hit in his first at bat. He'll need to retire him. 1-0. This is a grounder right over the shortstop. Gloves it. Throws over to India. Over to first. And that'll be a double play that we need to get out of the inning. Next, Pete Alonso. He really did settle down in after this. Getting the strikeout there on Pete. Now one out. We got Francisco Lindor up next. He will take this one deep out into center field. Going back. And he will love that. Two outs in the top, bottom of the fourth. 2 0 count here to Dominic Smith. Starting to lose him a little bit. Gets him a swing at that four seam. 2 1. Freezes him with the splitter up in the zone. Kind of a dangerous pitch, but 2 2. Gets him to swing at the splitter down low. Changing the eye levels and getting out of that fourth inning with a strikeout. Next up, we go into the bottom of the fifth. Still no runs being produced by this Reds offense, which we're going to need to if we want to save Tyler Mahaley's start. And put up some decent run support to go ahead and try to come out here with a victory. Swinging and missing at the slider low and away. They just could not touch his off-speed stuff, his sliders and everything. The home run only came off four-seamer. Most of his hits came off four-seamers. But when it came to the splitter, that slider, untouchable. As you can see by that flyout. Now we're going into the bottom of six. Maybe starting to get tired a little bit. Not at all. Slider gets him to swing and miss. Now we got a 3-2 to Luis. Loses him there on the four-seamer. He was not getting the call there, but we're 70 pitches basically into the day. J.D. Martinez starting to look a little bit like Tyler Mahaley is getting a little tired, but then catches him sleeping, napping on the four-seamer on the outside. Two quick outs just like that. Runner still at first base, P. Alonzo. 2-2 two -two count, and he will fly this one deep out the center field to go ahead and win six innings of work so far. Six innings, seven strikeouts, two earned runs. Here we go to the bottom of the seventh. His last inning of work here. What is he going to put up for us? Starts it off with a little ground ball out there to second base. Then you got Dominic Smith. One, two, 84 pitches deep. Four seamer. Gets him frozen. Seven strikeouts on the day. Or I say eight strikeouts on the day. Next up, first pitch he sees. He takes this one deep out to center field. It'll be gloved. And in seven innings, strong of work. Two earned runs, eight strikeouts, four hits. Only one walk through that whole thing. And about that point, they went ahead and pulled him for Seth Lugo to go ahead and come in and finish out the rest of this game. Can we get some run support from him? We managed to pick up one, but now we need to see if Seth Lugo can come in, keep the door closed here in the bottom of the eighth, and get us out of here with a nice victory. Now, one thing about Seth Lugo, though, his motion was probably the slowest one that I've seen in MLB in a long time. My man does have a slow wind up. I don't know about with runners in scoring position, and thankfully enough, we didn't have to find out today. You see a swing and a miss there on the curveball, getting the first out of the inning. Next, we got Christian Valdez. 0-1. Oh, one. one out here to him. Takes this pitch going deep out into right field. Ranger will go ahead and move over. That above average speed was just enough there to get the second out of the bottom of the eighth. Now you got Sterling Marte coming back up again. Top of the lineup. First pitch he sees. He flies it out to Nick Senzel. And just like that, three up. Three down, we'll go to the top of the ninth, leading one to extend this ball game out. And it will start with the top of the lineup as Jonathan Indy takes the first pitch he sees. Good timing. He timed it up really well, but this will pop out right to second base. Next up, we got Tyler Stevenson. Two for four on the day. 
He'll take the first pitch he sees. Foul it off. 2 2 count coming in. Let's that one slide. It's a full count for Tyler Stevenson. Takes the slider upstairs, visibly upset of that one. That could have been a long ball, but it'll be another long pop up to second base. We got to rely on the middle of this order once again. Cesar Hernandez blooping a single out in the center field. He'll be on first base, two outs. Hands are trying to close this ball game out. Mike Moustakis is up next, 0 for 3 on the day. He'll ground this one out into right field. We've got two people on, two outs. Go ahead, run is over there at first base. We can use a whole bunch more insurance, though. Hazel Aguilar, 0 2. Chops a little grounder right over past first base, going to second. Ah, couldn't get there. Eight speed. I'll tell you all the time, it's not enough. So we'll take the loss there, man. 2 to 1, L to New York. We gave it our all. Just didn't get enough offense here today. And it was a little bit too little, too late to get those last two runs to come up. You look at the boss score here. I mean, we managed to put together nine hits, which that is so depressing. Stevenson, Hernandez, uh, Aguilar, Sinzel all had multi-hit games. Sinzel even had his third home run of the season. It's so depressing when you see nine hits, but only one run to show for it. Seven innings of work basically kind of down the drain. ERA still staying nice and tight, though. And we ended up the series basically getting swept by the Mets. Four to nothing loss here. Only two hits this time, both coming from Gallo and Granger. And uh, pitching performance-wise, I mean, there's nothing you could do when we only get two hits. Five on the third, only giving up one earned run. Even with a great start, we still weren't putting anything up. It was both those hits were home runs. So looking here at the stats, you know, as we get close to the end of the season, Donovan Solano's leading in batting average with 333. Mike Moustakis with five home runs. Jesus Aguilar and Joey Votto both with four. Eight RBIs, nine RBIs, and 16 for Mike Moustakis, who's leading again, once again, in power and clutchness. And I'm using home runs and RBIs to, you know, verify that. But batting average, Donovan Solano, rookie Doug Granger are both up there over 300. Cesar Hernandez hitting over 300. Tyler Stevenson starting to work back to that point, hitting about 280. But the people we got to watch are down here cold. Nick Senzel hitting under 200. Jose Barrero, Aquino, Albert Moore Jr. And Matthew Nielsen, 15 at-bats, is still yet to get a hit. So maybe a little bit early on his development. Maybe I was just too highly on him and I got him up too much in time. I didn't think big coming off the bench would affect him that much. I thought it might actually be good for him. But now I don't know. Maybe I need to start looking at possible trade opportunities or at least maybe just bringing him down, getting somebody new in. We'll see. The season will tell. If somebody's a triple-A baller, maybe they come up, he goes down if he can't turn this thing around. So looking at some other great stats here. I mean, Ward, Doug Granger has the highest war on the team right now with a .9. ISO, Mike Moustakis, but then right behind him, Doug Granger again, 209. That boy, I feel like it could be rookie of the year uh, if he keeps this up. Going over, looking at our pitching stats, Luis Castillo, Gutierrez, Hernandez, all three starters, quote unquote, because Gutierrez is a long reliever, and all three of them ERAs is through the roof. Seth Lugo, Warren, they're both not doing good either. So it's, it's a team effort. You saw the pit, the batting wasn't looking too good on the bottom half, but we got to put runs together, not just hits. And then ERAs are all high. I mean, we only have one, two, three, six people under a four ERA, and it keeps getting even less. You know, five under two, or five under three, four under two, and only three under a one ERA. Now Tyler Mahaley, one two, one point two WAR on the season, a seventeen point or. 10.4 strikeout for nine. I was looking at Lucas Sims numbers, which are still crazy too. 17.05 uh, in limited number innings is still impressive. Uh, but we got to start getting better production. And now I got to start looking like, do guys need to start going down, going up? You got to bring the wrong guys uh, up. Looking at Gutierrez. Um, still has a high fib. Strikeout for nine was pretty high, but now I'm looking like, mm, maybe I should have kept you down and maybe brought up Tariq Squall or Hunter Green. Only time will tell with those, though, as well, as we go ahead and look and see how their AAA seasons go and look and see if they want to move up or down. Now, looking at the lineup here, I did kind of want to maybe make a couple changes because Donovan Solano's hitting 333. I feel like he could possibly be moved up in the lineup, especially with India struggling, Tyler Stevenson. I mean, eh, same thing kind of with Doug Granger. Let me know what you guys think down below, though. Should I you know, shuffle up the rotation? Should I shuffle up the lineup a little bit and maybe we'll get a little bit more results? Because I'm thinking about shuffling up this lineup too, or this uh, pitching rotation. Y'all let me know what you guys think and how you guys might handle that situation. And let that be known down in the comment section down below, man. I'm going to go ahead and be out here for the day. Leave a like and comment on your way out. <clears throat> and subscribe if you are brand new. Turn that bell on so you know new 
new videos are coming out. Next time out, we will go ahead and get through the end of the month of April. And we still got Milwaukee and St. Louis, as well as you know, going into the month of May. And hopefully we can look to turn things around from this bad first month start and turn our season into the brave season. Maybe we can bounce back and still make the playoffs maybe late. Only time will tell. I know I keep saying it, but it's what will tell whether this is going to be the year at least we make a little step forward or do we kind of stay the same? Do we go backwards? As the season goes on, we'll make the adjustments and see what needs to be done. So, hope you guys did enjoy. It's me, your boy, SGG, aka the King Game Smooth Got Game, aka GM Smooth. And I'll catch you guys in the next Reds Rebuild video, man. Make sure you guys turn up that like button if you're ready for the next episode. And I'll catch you guys next time. I'm gone.